Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for convening this hearing. This is such a, a, a vital hearing on a vital topic. And to be honest with you, this hearing concerns, I think, every parent's nightmare. And I see you're nodding, Mr. Behar. You're a father. That, that uh, subject composes, that reality composes some of your testimony. I'm also a father of three. And what you have brought to this committee today is something that every parent in America needs to hear. The numbers are really stunning that one in four teenagers, minor children, will experience sexual solicitation on Meta's platforms at some point. One in eight say that they have experienced unwanted sexual advances. We're talking about children now. These are not adults. Children have experienced unwanted sexual advances just in the last week, within the last seven days. And of course, we know from Meta's own internal research that they knew the extent of this problem, even as they were ignoring you. And I want to turn to some of that research that Senator Blumenthal just referenced. Here's what Meta, these are Meta's own words from their own internal research on the effect of their own product on children, particularly young women. Quote, we make body image issues worse for one in three teen girls. Quote, teens blame Instagram for increases in the rate of anxiety and depression. This reaction was unprompted and consistent across all groups. Quote, teens told us they don't like the amount of time they spend on the app, but they feel they have to be present. They often feel addicted and know that what they're seeing is bad for their mental health, but feel unable to stop themselves. This is the reality that Meta and Instagram, Facebook, they knew these things were happening. These quotes are years old that I just read. You pointed this out to them too, Mr. Behar, and still they did nothing. In fact, they did worse than nothing. What your testimony shows is when you brought these concerns to them, when you exposed this reality, rather than respond, they cooked the books, if I understand your testimony correctly. They started telling the public, including Congress, and of course every parent in America, that, oh, we, we get 90% of unwanted sexual material, child sex abuse material, pornography, uh, terrorism threats, we, we take it down. Our, our AI systems find it and take it down. But what you expose is, in fact, those AI systems are catching only a small, small percentage of that kind of abusive material online. So when Facebook is out there promoting to the world, oh, we're taking down the vast majority, it's simply not true. And in fact, they know it's not true, and that statistic is designed to mislead. They are deliberately misleading parents about what's on their platform. They are deliberately misleading parents about the safety of their children online. And I just want to echo something that Senator Blumenthal has said. It is time for Congress to take action. It was time years ago for Congress to take action. It is it is an indictment of this body, to be honest with you, that we have not acted. And we all know the reason why, if I could just start with a little plain talk here this morning. Big tech is the biggest, most powerful lobby in the United States Congress. They spend millions upon millions upon millions of dollars every year to lobby this body. And the truth is, as every reporter in this room knows, and I hope you'll report it after this hearing, they do it successfully. They successfully shut down every meaningful piece of legislation every year. I've only been here for four years, and I have seen it repeatedly in the short time I have been here. We'll get all kinds of speeches in committee. We'll get speeches on the floor about how we have to act, and then this body will do nothing. Why? Money. That's why. Gobs of it. Gobs of it. Influencing votes. A hammer hold on this process. It is time for it to be broken, and the only way I know to break it is to bring the truth forward, and that's why we are so glad, Mr. Behar, that you are here today to do it. Senator Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Behar, thank you again for being here. I just want to first establish a, a fact or two, just to make sure everybody understands. So on October the 5th, 2021, you composed an email, which is now, I think, in the record, to Mark Zuckerberg, Sheryl Sandberg, and a group of other executives at Meta. Am I right so far? That's correct. In that memo, you disclosed to them that according to your own research, one in eight children, children now, had experienced unwanted sexual advances within the last seven days. Is that correct? That's correct. And about one in three, I think it was 27%, had experienced unwanted sexual advances outside of the seven day window. So that is more than, than seven days. Is, is that correct? That is correct. Those numbers are astounding. I just want to let that sink in. One in eight within seven days, a third of children outside of that window. Mark Zuckerberg, did he reply to you? He did not reply. Did he meet with you? He did not meet with me. Cheryl Sandberg, did she meet with you? 
she did not meet with me. So, in other words, the people who had recruited you to come back to Facebook, Meta, whatever, it's hard to keep up, uh, they ignored your findings. When you presented data to them they didn't want to see, they turned a blind eye. Let me, let me ask you about something else. This is from the Wall Street Journal's report earlier this year. This is June of this year. They found the following. I'm going to quote, Instagram helps connect and promote a vast network of accounts openly devoted to the commission and purchase of underage sex content. Pedophiles have long used the internet, but unlike the forums and file transfer services that cater to people who have an interest in illicit content, Instagram doesn't merely host these activities. Instagram's algorithms promote them. Instagram connects pedophiles and guides them to content sellers via recommendation systems that excel at linking those who share these interests, the journal and academic researchers found. This is a st stunning, stunning report, Mr. Behar, that, that more than buttresses, bears out what you were telling, trying to tell the executives who ignored you. To just give us a sense, what, in your own view, why do you think this is happening? Why has Instagram become, in the words of the Wall Street Journal, a vast pedophile network? Why are people like your daughter, every time they get on Instagram, they're being bombarded with unwanted sexual advances, sexual content? Why is this happening? My experience of that is that most of the resources, even close to all that they invest in this, go towards this very narrow definition of harm. And so I would encourage anybody here, when you're looking at this issue, if you find an account that seems to be a pedophile account selling things, try and act on it. Try and raise it. See what the company does with that. But see what happens if you like it or follow it, what you start getting recommended, and of all of the things that get surfaced by the systems, how many of them are they acting on? It's a fraction of a percent. One of the things that you said changed from the time you left Facebook in 2015, I think it was, and came back in 2019, was that Facebook had shifted to an automated driven process of uh, safety standards, safety inspection, monitoring for things like this, which they boast about. They say that their AI is great, it's doing great work. That doesn't appear, however, to be the actual fact. It appears that these harms are proliferating. Tell us about the shift towards automated safety monitoring and what that has meant in your experience. I was not there for the shift, but what I can say is that algorithms are as good as their inputs. So if you don't allow a child to be, oh, that is gross, it makes me uncomfortable, right? Which is something that you can do for an ad today. You can, you can take an ad and say, that is sexually inappropriate. But there's no way for a child to do that when they get a message or other areas. How do these systems like even have a hope of addressing these issues? How can they, as a company, have a hope of addressing these issues if they're not willing to listen when a teen is trying to tell them that they're experiencing gross content, unwanted sexual advances. I mean, that's how you find predators. That's how you find the bad things. So what, what your research found and what you elevated to leadership was at least in part that these automated systems were not catching the vast majority of, of this unwanted content out there. I mean, the sexual advances of, of this pedophile material, it, it simply doesn't begin to capture. Yet Facebook didn't shift more resources, didn't change their process. And here's the thing that really gets me, and I'll end with this, Mr. Chairman. I know there's others who want to question. I have been reading over and over and over again this case filed by my home state, Missouri versus Biden. Landmark First Amendment case in which two federal courts, federal district court and a federal court of appeals, have found that Facebook, among others, actively coordinated with the present administration to censor First Amendment protected speech. Not this garbage that is not protected by anything in our Constitution, but First Amendment protected speech. Here's what gets me. What the courts found, this is in the record, this is factual findings, is that Facebook devoted all kinds of resources and people, actual human people, to doing things like monitoring posts on COVID-19 vaccine efficacy. There's one example of a parent in my home state of Missouri who wanted to post something about a school board meeting. Facebook used human moderators to go and take down that post. That was important. That has to come down. We can't have them posting about school board meetings, for heaven's sake. 
But the things that your daughter experienced, the, this, this ring of pedophiles, rings plural, that Facebook just can't t- find the time for. They just don't have the resources for it. That we just have to leave to, you know, let the market have its effect. Let AI do its job. We just don't have the resources for it. They had plenty of resources to, to censor First Amendment speech. No resources to protect our children. Absolutely unconscionable. Thank you.